Now let's look at how we can generate events using timers. Often in software, we want to do something that is really regular, right? We basically want to do something over and over again on some uh, period, some uh, a specific interval. Things like maybe uh, just generating an external pulse to run some piece of hardware, or maybe we want to do a software trigger and run some task every couple of seconds, like updating a display or checking the temperature of some oven that we're building, right? These are all regular events, and they usually take the form of something like this, where we have a while loop, which is our infinite loop, we can't exit out to anywhere, uh, and we have something that says, is it time yet? If it is time, do the thing, right? Do whatever it is that we want to do. And then we have other things that we need to do in the meantime, whatever we're doing otherwise. This is such a common pattern uh, that it's really challenging if we've got a really complicated thing to make sure that the is it time yet function is getting called regularly and we can make sure that we're not missing any events or any inter intervals, particularly if we're doing like uh, some kind of process in the background and we're dealing with a user interface. This is where I deal with it a lot is uh, I have to check all the buttons and make sure that they're all refreshed and uh, make sure that the uh, temperature sensor is red and uh, all kinds of extra other things, right? And if we're doing a task, how do we manage our time so that we're always working a little bit on the one thing and always updating the other thing so that we have uh, everything happening when we need it to, right? This is the foundation of that hard real-time type of behavior that we were talking about in class. So this is such a common thing that a lot of hardware designers build in a timer, a piece of hardware that allows us to push a task of checking to see if it's time yet off to a piece of hardware, have that run in the background, and we can basically fire and forget it. So the first thing we're gonna do with our timer is look a little bit at how it works for our specific case. Uh, in this case, our timer hardware is actually really simple. Some of the uh, sy systems are way more complicated, but this one is really simple. And it consists of something that's very similar to the simulation that we just looked at. Uh, first is we get to decide what clock source we're working on and we can work from some external clock which allows us to count events that are happening outside of the processor. There is uh, a couple of internal clocks, either no clock or the module clock, whatever that source is, uh, and that's all modified by the C mod, the clock uh, um, modifier uh, register. So we can set our clock source for the clock, for the timer. Uh, next, we have a prescaler, and we talked about what prescalers do. This just defy, divides whatever the frequency of the input clock is by whatever we set it to. In this case, we can go from one to 128. So we can take our eight megahertz clock and divide it by 128, and that gives us a much slower tick per, or a much slower uh, 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 timer, right? Uh, then there's the module counter. In this case, it's 16 bits, so we can only count up to about 65,000 uh, counts. So we can only count 65,000 events. And that makes this really important if we want to do stuff in like human time. So if we want to set a timer for about one second, uh, 8 megahertz, 8 million cycles would overflow this uh, module counter really fast. So the timer module would, would overflow very quickly and we wouldn't know if we ever reached our 8 millionth cycle. So if we divide it by 128, then that gets us down to the range where I can count whole seconds uh, that pass. There's also uh, a special modulus register, and what this does is it defines the upper limit of where the um, uh, timer will overflow and then reset itself. So in this case, I can set the, in, in our cases, I can set the modulus register to maybe half of what the module counter is, It'll count up to half of that, and then it'll reset at zero, count up again, reset at zero, count up again. And this is how we generate regular events. Every time that the modulus register matches the module counter, uh, it also sets the overflow flag, which we can also uh, generate an interrupt off of. And we'll talk about what interrupts are in detail later on uh, in the semester. But basically, this is a little flag that tells us that uh, uh, a certain bit is set in a register when the timer has uh, matched the modulus register and basically when it's reached its top, when it's counted all the way up. Our basic 
mode of operation is up counting where the timer counts one tick at a time for every clock cycle that's driving it and then when it matches the modulus register uh, then it uh, uh, is it does one cycle then it resets and start counting over again so in this case the modulus uh, register is four the module counter counts up zero one two three four notice that's five cycles because we count the zero one that's a, a real one uh, then it resets. So if we want to do a specific time, uh, if we want to generate events on a specific, a very specific time, we have to subtract one cycle from that uh, overall time. Also notice that once the timer reaches the same value, uh, once the counter reaches the same value as the modulus register, the timer uh, overflow flag bit is, is set. Uh, and it stays set. Uh, if we want to reset it, we can do that from software by writing a one to that same flag, which seems counterintuitive, but think of it as writing a reset bit. Uh, so it, it it's only ever set by the timer itself. So when we write a one to it, that sets it, that causes it to reset uh, down to zero. So now the question is, where does this module clock come from? Where can we find it? Now, this is a task for digging in the data sheet in the reference manual of, the, um, of, the, uh, uh, of this processor. So go digging in the data sheet of this processor and see if you can find where the timer module clock is, is sourced from. So the first place we can look is in the clock distribution section of the reference manual. And the thing we want to look at in particular is this flow diagram, right? Uh, there's a couple of things here. We see the clock options for some peripherals. See note, uh, and there's no good note here, right? Awesome. These data sheets are fantastic. So basically, this is where the clocks come from, these, these extra clocks. So we've got the Clore clock, the platform clock, the system clock. Those are not uh, one of the resources, one of the sources we can go to. There's the Bux clock or Flash clock. That's not what it comes from. So it's really got to be, by process of elimination, one of these other clock options. Uh, and these are controlled by... Um, various configuration things here. But the one we want to pay attention to is the oscillator external clock, OSR clock or Oscar clock. Uh, this one is the one that we want to use. It's basically a raw eight megahertz counter and or a raw eight megahertz um, uh, clock uh, system. And uh, we want to use that in our timer. To figure out how to do this, we have to go reading in the SIM module, the system integration module. So in the system integration module, we can go and find, uh, basically we wanna read through these, these registers and see which one controls the source for the TPM, the P TPM clock or the timer and P uh, PWM module, the TPM. It turns out that the one that we want is uh, SOPT2 or SIM options two, which has the TPM source uh, bits. Now, if we go look at these, TPM source, is the TPM clock source select. It selects the clock source for the TPM counter clock. And we've got a couple of options. The clock is disabled. Uh, Oscar clock uh, is the one that we want down here. So eventually we want to write, when we're setting up the, the processor, we want to set this particular field in uh, SOP2 to uh, binary one zero and make sure that that selects the clock. That selects the clock source for our timer. So let's look at a task where we want to generate a real-time delay function. So in this case, I've got a little program, and basically it's a rehash of my Blink program. Instead of doing a busy wait, uh, what we're going to do here, and, and just uh, making up our time as we go, is we're going to set a timer, and we're going to see how long it takes for that to get all the way through. Then uh, we'll be able to trigger events. So this is a specific wait for milliseconds, right? Um, and I've got my, basically my same uh, Blink, uh, Blinky program here. It's set, I've set up my uh, port module for output and I toggle the output pin on and off so that I'm getting the LED to blink. Now, the first thing that I need to do inside of my delay milliseconds is I need to set up the, uh, I need to enable TPM zero, right? So we have to do the same thing that we did before with the system clock uh, gate control register. Uh, and we have to go find where TPM zero is. Uh, reading through the gate control registers, uh, I'm gonna find that it is in, 
Uh, it's not in five. It's in register six. So the TPM is controlled in register six. I'm gonna be working with TPM zero in this case. So I wanna set bit 24 of TPM of uh, SCGC six. Next, I wanna set the clock source bits. So those same SOP two uh, bits that we were just looking at, which is opt two or equals. Uh, and we wanted to set uh, bit 24 and 25 to one zero. So that's a hex two left shifted 24 bits. So that sets the Oscar clock to the TPM clock source. So that's our input clock for uh, this particular device. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is go and look at our uh, uh, TPM configuration. So this enables the right clock source and it enables the TPM to make sure everything is set up. Now let's look at the TPM documentation, the, the timer uh, module documentation, and see how uh, this particular module works. So the timer PWM chapter tells us everything that we need to know. And this thing is actually pretty simple. There's only a few registers that we need to configure that we haven't seen yet. We've already talked about the T mod register or the, the mod register. Now we uh, just need to look at the conf and SC registers. So the conf register has a couple of bits in it that we really care about. And the most important one that we want to, we care about right now is the CSOO bit. Uh, which is this guy here, and it's the counter stop on overflow. And basically, this says we don't want it to uh, reset and start counting again, we just want it to stop. So in this case, we're just doing a one-shot delay. We're gonna uh, 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 reset this thing every time we do it. So let's just run it all the way through and make sure that it stops. So this idea is we're gonna set this bit, number 17 of the conf register, in TPM zero, and that'll allow us to stop the timer once it is uh, set. Uh, what it once it has reached whatever we put in the mod register. And the next register that we care about is the status and control register. So this one sets up a lot of the modes for the system and it also has the prescaler built into it, right? So now we have our uh, uh, counter mode and we have the prescaler. In this case, uh, clock mode, uh, we wanna make sure that we're using the clock that we set up. So the counter increments on every TPM clock. So this is uh, our clock source is our internal clock source, the TPM clock source. We can also set it to be on the external pin uh, or we can turn it off, right? Um, we're gonna wait to set this one because as soon as we set the clock source, the timer starts counting and we haven't finished setting it up yet. So we're gonna uh, hold off on that one. One thing that we, uh, one thing that we do want to do is we want to write to the TOF bit so that we make sure that we reset it. We don't know if we've called this function before, if we're already overflowed. So we're going to write to this bit. So we're going to write a one to TOF and we're also going to select um, uh, a, a prescaler for our particular um, uh, clock, for our particular system. So this code sets the, uh, well, it resets the overflow flag. The next thing we wanna do is set the prescaler. And just off the top of my head, I'm thinking about how um, fast I need to do this thing, right? So basically I want to do somewhere around um, like a second of, of, uh, of processing, right? Or I basically, I basically wanna count uh, somewhere in the range of milliseconds, right? Uh, now, my prescaler options are all the way up from 1 to 128, uh, but my counter only goes up to 65,536. So if I do, uh, I want to slow it down pretty, pretty a lot. I'm, I'm pretty sure I want to slow it down a lot, right? So uh, if I take my 8 million cycles per second and I divide it by 65,536, then I get about 122. So if I want my full range of the um, of the uh, timer to represent about one second, then I have to divide it by at least 122. The next closest one is 128. So let's divide it by that one, the slowest possible timer or slowest possible prescaler. I don't want to do any less. I don't want to go down to 64 because if I go down to 64, then I've only got half of the range and the timer will overflow 
uh, before I reach half a second. So if I want to do a whole second, I'm, I'm out of luck. So a 111 and the lower three bits, basically I, I want to just write a 111, uh, a, a 7, the value 7, into the prescalar register of SC. So let's do that. Uh, basically I'm just going to OR it with 0x7 there, right? So that gives me my slowest possible prescalar. Uh, next, I need to figure out how long to set my modulus register. How long do I wait before I hit my next tick? The way I do that is with this calculation. Basically, it's my timer period, my desired timer period, how long I wanna wait, my delay, whatever that is, is equal to the modulus register plus one divided by the frequency of the clock divided by the prescaler, right? Now, I know most of this stuff. I know that the uh, delay, the, the average delay that I wanna do is about one millisecond. So I'm trying to figure out what my scaling ratio for one millisecond, how many, uh, how much do I have to add to my modulus register? Uh, I also know that my clock and prescaler are eight megahertz and 128, so it gives me that. And what I end up with is a relationship like this, about 0 .001, 0 0.001 seconds, one millisecond, is equal to the modulus register divided by um, 62,500. So uh, if I crank through this uh, and just do a little bit of algebra, you see that my modulus register for every millisecond, I should give about 62.5 uh, minus one. So every millisecond takes uh, 62.5 ticks in the thing. Now, I can't put in a floating point number. So what I have to do is I have to put in a the 62 and then half of the uh, delay, whatever my delay is, is what I'm going to add on to it. So let's look at how I do that. So I want to set the TPM0 modulus register to my time. Uh, in this case, I've got my delay T, which is an unsigned integer, and each one of those is worth 62 ticks, right? Now, to get the half part, I'm going to take uh, the delay T and divide it by two, and that gives me the 0.5. So it's just like saying 0.5 times whatever delay T is. Now, I can't do 62.5 times uh, 0.5, uh, I don't want to do floating point operations. I just want to do a divide by two, or I could uh, left shift it by one and add that as well. Then I want to subtract one whole cycle uh, for really precise timing, right? So now I've got everything set up and all I have to do is tell the uh, system control register to start counting. And by do that, to do that, all I have to do is write to the uh, uh, C mod bits of the system uh, uh, control um, register for TPM zero. So to start the clock, we do TPM zero. So setting it to clock source one increments the counter on every TPM clock. And that's it. The timer's off and running. Now all I have to do is wait until the timer overflow flag is set. And that's also in the TPM zero uh, SC. So uh, that is bit number seven. So uh, a wait is just a while, and I'm going to say while not. So bit seven is the most significant bit of uh, one byte. So I get eight zero. Uh, there is my mask, and I'm not going to do anything uh, in, this, in this loop. I'm just going to sit here and wait for it to tick by, then I'm going to return. Right? So this is my delay in milliseconds, and it totally works out. So if I uh, run this in my program, it'll call uh, the delay, it'll toggle, and I should see it on my um, little board here as it, uh, as it executes. So let's try this out. Okay, so something weird happens in, when I run this code, and we can see it right here. So I'm going to start the launcher, right? And the green LED should turn on. Right, so I'm gonna hit resume, and the LED turns on, but it doesn't turn off, and it turns on uh, turns off after a second. So let's try that again. Now I'm at hardware in it, and I say ready, set, go, and it turns on after a second. Right, so that's really weird. So it means the timer's working, but it's only working once. And I did a little bit of digging, and I noodled through this, and what I came up with is in our delay function. Right here, 
where it says TPM SC is or equal with these bits. I really want this to be equal to, right? Because what actually happens is when I calculate this, when I, when I decide whether I'm going to write a one or not to this, because remember this resets, this uh, instruction right here resets, resets the overflow flag uh, bit. And the problem is when I say or equals, it reads the current bit, which is set, decides whether or not to include this bit in the new value that gets written in. If it's already set, it's not, and it actually goes in as zero. So weirdly enough, uh, when I go to do an or equal here, this one doesn't reset that flag, so the timer only runs once. If I do it again, if I set this equal to zero, now check it out. I hit play, it goes along, and now you can see it flashes every time because now we're successfully clearing that bit every time it goes through the delay.